atoms versus ions. Alkaline metals contain one valence electron. They are considered very unstable. Now, what does an alkaline metal have to do to achieve a stable state? Okay, and that's pretty much going to be the key of this lesson. We're going to be looking at the valence shell and the importance of it being full. Okay, so let's look at sodium. Sodium, or let's look at the atomic number. The atomic number is 11, which means our protons to electrons count have to be 11. So let's draw a Bohr diagram. So we start off with a symbol and we need to fill in the electrons. So we need to, to fit eight, sorry, 11 electrons. Two can fit in the first shell, eight in the second shell. We have a total now of 10 electrons and which means it has one valence electron. And that valence electron, um, we know because it's in group number one. So now, for sodium to become stable, it needs to do one of two things. It can either lose one electron or gain seven electrons. So most likely, energetically, which one's more energetically favorable to sodium is to lose the one electron. So let's say bye-bye to that valence electron. There it goes. But now the count here that we have, positives to negatives, is no longer the same. Now watch the change. We have 10 negatives, which means we have more positives than negatives. How many more positives? Well, we have a total of one extra proton, which means now sodium carries a charge of plus one. Magnesium, atomic number is 12. Again, 12 protons, 12 electrons. So let's start off by writing in the symbol. Mg, two electrons of the 12, another eight, because eight can fit in the second. So we have a total of 10 electrons, which means we have two valence electrons. And magnesium is part of group number two. So for magnesium to become stable, it has also one of two options. It can lose two electrons or gain six electrons because there's a total of eight that can fit in that shell. So most likely, which is more energetically favorable? Well, to lose two electrons. So let's say bye-bye to those two valence electrons. There they go. And now our proton to electron count is no longer 12 protons, 12 uh, electrons. It is 12 protons and 10 electrons, which means now magnesium is no longer neutral. Magnesium has a surplus of two protons. Okay, so notice here, two protons. Why? Because the count is a difference of two extra positives. Okay. So now let's look at the opposite end of the periodic table. We have fluorine, and fluorine has an atomic number of nine so which means nine positives nine negatives okay start off with a symbol start off with the letter f and we need nine electrons so two in the first shell and seven in the final shell total of nine electrons now for fluorine to become stable it needs to do one of two things it can either lose those seven electrons or it can gain one electron and most likely it will gain an electron. So there it is, it just gained. So let's just watch that again. It, we're gonna gain one electron. Here it comes in, okay? Odds are it probably came in from one of the metals. Now, the, look at the uh, positives to negative count. Now we no longer have a surplus of positive, we have a surplus of negatives, okay? We have nine positives and 10 negatives. So nine protons, 10 electrons. So fluorine has a excess charge of negative one okay sulfur let's look again we are to the right of the periodic table the atomic number of sulfur is 16 so our positive proton to electron count is 16 to 16. we start off with a symbol and we need 16 electrons two on the first shell eight on the next shell we have a total of 10 and we are now in group 16 and so now we are putting in the rest of the electrons. So we have 16 valence electrons. Now, for sulfur to become stable, 
it needs to do one of two things. Lose six electrons or gain two electrons. And most likely, it will gain two electrons. And there they are. Now, let's look at the proton to electron count. 16 protons, 16 uh, electrons, but now we've added two more electrons. So now our count is 16 protons, 18 electrons. We have a surplus of two extra negatives, which means the charge for sulfur is negative two. So let's see what is the difference between an atom and an ion. Okay, now here we have two examples that we already looked at. We, or Sorry, one example, should I say. Both of them are exactly identical. Sodium atom, okay, and look at what happened. Sodium atom, sodium ion. Notice the difference? Let's see that again. Both of them are sodium atoms. Notice, same count, everything, electrons. Watch the difference. Take away that one electron, becomes positively charged because we lost an electron. So we have here what we call a sodium ion. Now, we have magnesium, magnesium, both the same. They're both magnesium atoms. Watch this now. One magnesium just lost two electrons, which means now they are no longer the same. Okay? One is a magnesium atom. Okay? One is the atom. This one is the ion. Okay? And that's the difference. So the ion has a charge with it. Now, let's see some of the non-metals here. So magnesium atom, magnesium ion. Now, when metals become ions, they are called cations. And a way to remember cations, cations are positively charged. And now, how, do you, how can you tell? Well, play, pay close attention to the spelling of cation. We have the letter T for cation. And it looks like a positive sign. So think of it that way. Cations are positively charged because the T, we think of it as a plus sign. Okay, So the examples there, sodium atom becomes a sodium ion, magnesium atom becomes a magnesium ion. And these are what we call cations. Okay, So now let's look at the non-metals. Here's an example of a fluorine atom. Both of them are fluorine. But watch what happened to that fluorine. It became negative 1 because we added an electron. So here's a fluorine atom. This is now what we call a fluoride ion. And the ions of non-metals undergo something called pretty much a name change. And it's the IDE ending. So we add an IDE ending for non-metal ions. Okay, so non-metal ions, we have a negative, uh, sorry, a, uh, an IDE name change. Okay. So, notice the IDE different, uh, ending for the non-metal. Okay, so non-metals gain electrons to become stable, therefore they become negatively charged. When they do so, they are called anions. And so think about um, a couple of ways to remember anions is the letter N here, okay? Think of the N, and it can stand for negative, okay? Or think of the N um, in terms of, um, yeah, sorry. So think of it in terms of negative, or think of it in terms of non-metals. So non-metals, okay, be can become anions when they become negatively charged. And they can only become negatively charged. They can never become positively charged. And the other thing to make note of is the IDE ending. 